friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to go over the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, which is the second weekly prompt challenge that I have in 2021. Now I've already gone through about half of the prompts for my other weekly reading challenge and those books are sitting right here so being completely honest with you I'm gonna try and incorporate these ones into this challenge first let's start these prompts the first one is a book in a different format format than what you normally read audiobook ebook or graphic novel so I'm definitely going to choose an ebook. I think it's Even If We Break. Yeah, it's Even If We Break by American Ninja Camp. I probably totally butchered that, but I'll put a picture of it right here. So... Even If We Break is a book, a YA mystery that I've had on my radar for a while. And then for Christmas I did the like prolong, prolonged shipping. So they waited a few extra days to ship it. And then they gave me $3 credit for every Christmas present that I sent. So with that credit, thank you guys. <laughs> Any of my family that's watching, thank you for buying me a Kindle book. You didn't know it, but you did. A book that has fewer than a thousand reviews on Amazon or Goodreads. That one we'll come back to. Let's see, a book you think your best friend would like. A book about art or an artist. I actually know this one already. Love, Life, and the List by Casey West. So this is about an artist who is named Abby who doesn't get into art school like she wanted to. So now she has this bucket list type thing that she wants to do to not only improve her art, but to improve herself. So a book everyone seems to have read but you. Okay, so there's actually two books on here that I could choose for that. I could choose the classic that is on my list already, which is Oliver Twist. Or, you know what? I'm gonna go with a book that's been on booktube for a while, that's been like super hyped, and I've been seeing it everywhere on booktube. So everyone on booktube has read it but me. So I'm gonna pick the Tea Dragon Society by Kate, by Katie O'Neill, which is this cute little graphic novel. Your favorite prompt from a past pop sugar reading challenge. A book set in a restaurant. Okay, I don't know what I was thinking, so this partially takes place in a restaurant, so I'm going to count it, and that is The Fortunes of Indigo Sky by Deb Calatini. So this is about this server. Okay, so she's a waitress. She's 18 years old. And she has like a normal, you know, happy life. Until this mysterious customer leaves her a two and a half million dollar tip that changes her whole world. A book with a black and white cover. So this is a black and white cover. It's The House by Christina Lauren. It's about a haunted house. 
or it's a haunted house story by an indigenous author. I'm going to have to come back to, to that one. A book ha that has the same title as a song. So I'm going to pick Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I love the song by Kelly Clarkson. Since you've been gone, I can breathe for the first time. I'm so moving on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to you. I know I'm not a singer for a reason. This is a booktube channel. So, a book about a subject you are passionate about. This is another one that was on my other TBR. So this is Chicken Soup for the Teacher Soul. I'm a teacher. I'm very passionate about teaching and about my students. A book that discusses body positivity. <laughs> so this is another nonfiction book. But this is You Being Beautiful. The Owner's Manual to Inner and Outer Beauty by Michael F. Rosen and Dr. Oz. A book found on Black Lives Matter reading list. That one I think I'm going to do later. I'm probably going to borrow an audiobook for that one. Like How to Be an Anti-Racist or something like that. A book that's published in 2021. Okay, so that prompt was actually on both lists and I already have my book for it. Yeah, Amelia Unabridged. This comes out in February. Then an Afrofuturistic book. I don't have a clue what book I'm going to pick for that one. A book that has a heart, diamond club, or spade on the cover. Married with zombies, it has a big broken heart in the middle. But it's about this couple whose marriage is in on the rocks during when the zombie apocalypse starts and they have to either work together and stay together or they have to die. The couple who slays together stays together. A book by an author who shares your zodiac sign. This one took some digging but I'm super excited for this book. I'm picking Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo because Lee Bardugo oh. is an Aries just like me. Dark Academia book. A book with a gem, mineral, or rock in the title. Okay, so for this one, I'm thinking Cinder and L. There's our igneous rocks that are fragments of solidified lava. So it's Cinder and Ella by Melissa Lemon. Everything you know about Cinderella is about to change. So this is the real story of Cinderella. It's a twist on Cinderella. If you drink water and breathe air, then you have heard the story of Cinderella. And if you drink water and breathe air, you have heard it wrong. Current or dream job. So I've given this a lot of thought. My dream jobs would be a mom, first and foremost. Although, is that really a job? I mean, I feel like it's a full-time job that gets little to no recognition. Then teacher, which I am a teacher. And then at the bottom, I was trying to figure out, like, as a kid, I wanted to be a spy. So I have a bunch of buy books. I don't know if I have any books that has a teacher as a main character, but I might for 
a mom or a wife because I've always wanted to be a mom and a wife. I'm not yet a mom. Do those count? I'm going to say that they count. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with wife because I've always dreamed of being a wife. Picking Dear Wife by Kimberly Bell, which is a thriller book that has won the Woman's Prize for Fiction. A book with a family tree. I'm going to go with A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin for Family Tree. A bestseller from the 90s. I'm going with Jurassic Park by Michael Creighton. So for a book about forgetting, I really wish I could pick Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards. If you're doing the Pop Sugar Challenge and you're having problems thinking of books that are about forgetting, pick Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards because it was so good. I was addicted to the writing and it just blew my mind. It was, it was just perfect. I gave it five stars. It'll be on the best of 2020 list because like almost, I think it's pretty close to the top. Anyways, for the one that I'm picking, I'm going with All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. So this is about a girl named Jenny Kramer who goes to a party and she is violently assaulted. And for some reason she is giving these drugs that are supposed to help her forget, but she's not forgetting. A book you have seen on someone else's bookshelf in real life on a TV show booktube I'm going to pick The Troop by Nick Cutter this has been buzzing on booktube and I want to know this terror this war this suspense this gruesome survival story a locked room mystery. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Kind of a spin on And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, but it's about this hunting party. So they're on like this island, I think. I don't know. Oh no. A New Year's reunion in the remote Scottish wilderness where one dies and Everyone's a suspect, so you have to figure out what happened. A genre hybrid. I'm going to skip that one for now. We're going to do a book set, or mo mostly or entirely outdoors. Psh. I'm picking Feral Youth by 10 dif different authors, but Sean David Hutchinson, Suzanne Young... Robin Talley, Brandy Colbert, Justina Ireland, Stephanie Cohen, Kim Florin, E.C. Myers, and more. So this is about a group of teenagers that have to learn to survive in the wilderness. A book with something broken on the cover. I'm going with Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. So there's blood on her necklace. And how does blood get somewhere? It means that someone was hurt. Someone was broken. And that's how the blood got there. I know it's a stretch, but just go with me there. Please. A book by a Muslim American author, that one I'm going to have to come back to. But if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. A book that was pub 
published anonymously. I honestly don't know for that one, so I'm going to skip that one for now. A book with an oxymoron in the title. I can't find one on my shelf, so we'll come back to that one. A book about do-overs or fresh starts. So for this one, I'm going to go with The Second Wife by Rebecca Fleet. Uh, this is about a guy named Alex who meets Natalie after his wife dies. And they end up falling in love and getting married until one night when Alex is at work and... Natalie is home alone with Jade, his teenage daughter, and there is a fire in the house, and Jade tells her dad that she saw a man in the room with Natalie, and that they were up to no good, and that something happened with the fire, I think. Her boyfriend started it, not, I think that Natalie's boyfriend or the person she was having an affair with started the fire. A magical realism book. I'm going to skip that one too. A book set in multiple countries. I'm going to skip for now as well. A book set somewhere you'd like to visit in 2021. Is it somewhere I'd like legitimately like to visit or can it be like in a dream world if I had all the money in the world? I'm gonna do an easy one because I live in Arizona. So I'm gonna do The Water Knife by Paolo Balagolfi. This is a story about what happens to the water when the Colorado River ceases to exist and this like water investigator goes to Phoenix and Las Vegas and I could easily go to Phoenix and Vegas in 2021. Uh, a book by a blogger, vlogger, YouTube video creator, or other online personality. I'm going to skip that one too. A book whose title starts with Q, X, or Z. Okay, yeah, that's not happening today. A book featuring three generations, grandparent, parent, and child. Okay, I'm going to skip that one for now too. A book about a social justice issue. I think I'm going to pick House Rules by Jodi Holt because... This is kind of closer to my heart than the Edward Snowden story. Now we're on the advanced side. So the longest book by pages on your TBR list. Arm of Swords. It's like close to 1100 pages. Then the shortest book by pages on your TBR. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark at a whopping 97 pages. The book on your TBR list with the prettiest cover. I'm going with We Set the Dark on Fire, Let Rebellion Burn. The book on your TBR list with the ugliest cover. So I'm not really impressed with any of the covers, but I think I'm going to go be with Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson. It's just a picture, like a close-up of a face that's kind of like looking away, kind of like, uh, but it's like blue and I, I don't know, it just says nothing about the story. The book that's been on your TBR for the longest amount of time, oh, I think. Anything But Okay by Sarah Darer Littleman. This is about a broken friendship and a brother that comes back from the war, but he's changed. I think he has PTSD, but he ends up shooting someone at 
the movies, I believe. A book from your TBR list you meant to read last year, but didn't. That literally could be all of them. But one that I was really excited for and even started at one point was The Last to Let Go by Amber Smith. I read The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. Loved it. It was amazing. Uh, so I really want to read more by this author. A book from your TBR you associate with a favorite person, place, or thing. That one I'm going to come back to. A book from your TBR chosen at random. Okay, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to do ten. That way it's not like for sure that I get one that is already on my TBR. That way it's a little more fair. So I actually picked seven more. So I'm going to do it like every other. Well, maybe not every other. I'm just going to put a different pattern so we can pick. from these, um, so it could be 50-50. Okay, so it's a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this one that was already on there. So, a book randomly picked on my TBR is No Place to Hide by Glenn Greenwald, which is the Edward Snowden case. A DNF book from your TBR list. I did not get into this book at all, so I DNF'd it pretty early on. It's The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. Honestly, I didn't make it very far. I think I made it to like chapter two a free from your tbr list gifted borrowed library so for this one i'm gonna go with dragon tears by dean coots i got a ton of dean coots books from michael she sent me like a box full last year and i've hardly read any of them so i really need to get on reading them all right, and then I'll tell you how many books we actually picked for this challenge. There are 52 prompts total because it's one a week. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We picked 30 of the prompts. 30 of the prompts actually have books. So that is really good because the first weekly challenge that I did tonight, or like the prompts and everything, I only picked 24, so I'm really proud of that. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any suggestions or recommendations for any of the prompts that I did not pick a book for, please leave them in, please leave them in the comments below because I need all the help I can get. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you guys in the next video.